Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will learn something called as bidirectional RNNs and how they work. Okay. So till now we have learnt how a simple RNN works, and we have also seen improvements on simple RNNs called as LSTM and GRUs, and how they help us to solve the long-term dependencies in a sentence. So keeping this in mind, let's proceed further and understand what bidirectional RNNs are. So these are deep learning models where the output at any given time step depends on the activation from the previous time step, the current input and also the outputs activations from the future time steps. Okay. So that is why it is called as bidirectional RNN. So where do we need this particular setup wherein in order to compute the output at any given time step, we need to consider the context from the future as well. So just think, if you just think you will get to know that there is a task called as NER which stands for named entity recognition. Okay. So let me just write it NER. So this is named entity recognition. So wherein we in a given sentence we need to recognize each word like maybe we need to identify the objects, we need to identify the subject, we need to identify the word, noun, place, etc. Okay. So I have written some sentences here. Okay. So if you consider the first sentence, I love apple, especially when it's juicy. And in sentence two, I am saying I like the way Apple designs its products. They look so good and are also durable. So in both of these sentences, there is a common word called as apple. Correct. But in the first sentence, the word apple is referring to fruit. And how do I know that it is a fruit? Because I am saying I love apple, especially when it is juicy. So what this word is, is actually dependent on the word which is occurring towards the end of this sentence, which is in the future. Correct. So when I read the sentence completely, and when I read when it's juicy, I get to know that this word apple I'm referring to here is a fruit. Okay. Similarly, in the second sentence, the word apple here, this here is talking about a company called as apple or you can also treat it as an organization named apple. And how do I know that this word is referring to the apple as a company or apple as an organization? Because I am saying I like the way apple designs its products. Right. So, in this case also, I am able to conclude that this word Apple is referring to the company or organization named Apple after reading this particular three tokens designs its products. Okay. So, this is one example wherein the identification of any word as to what it is referring to depends on the future context. So, let us consider another set of sentences where I am saying I have two large windows in my room. So I do not have problem with ventilation. Okay. So in this sentence, I have the word windows, which is referring to a physical object present in my room. And how do I know that? Because I am saying I have two large windows in my room. So I do not have problem with ventilation. So it is clear that by the word window, I am referring to some physical object wherein from where I will get the light and air. Okay. But in the sentence 4, I am saying I have always worked on Windows till now. So finding it difficult to work on Mac OS. So in this sentence, the word Windows is referring to operating system. And how do I know that it is referring to operating system? Because towards the end of this sentence, I am saying finding it difficult to work on Mac OS. So after getting to know the future context, I am able to tell accurately what this word is representing. In this case, it is representing an operating system. Correct. So in order to solve these problems, these kind of problems, we have something called as bidirectional RNNs. Bidirectional RNNs. Okay. So, how does a bidirectional RNN architecture looks like? So, you know that it has to consider 
the inputs from the previous time step, the current time step, and also it has to consider the context from the future time step. So, how does it look like? So, let me quickly draw that. So, it won't take much time. So, let me first draw a simple RNN as we all know it. Okay. So, if we treat this as one block of RNN, so let me unroll it for multiple time steps. So, let me unroll it for four time steps here. So, this is how a simple RNN looks like. So, starting at time 0, I will get all the vectors which are having zeros. So, this is also called as vector of all zeros. So, at time step 1, I will have my input x1. At time step 2, I will have my, have my input x2. At time step 3, I will have my input x3. At time step 4, I will have my input x4. Okay. And I will take the activation from this. I will call it as A1. This will be my A2. This will be my A3. And finally, I will have my A4. And at each time step, we can have our outputs. Let us write that later. Okay. So, this is how a simple RNN looks like and you guys already know it. It is not new, new, new to you guys, right? So, when it comes to bidirectional RNN, we will have another block of RNN running in a reverse direction. So, let me draw that with a different color here. So, I will have a RNN block here. So, I will have it here as well. Okay. So, this is how a bidirectional RNN actually looks like. So, it runs from right to left. The basic simple RNN runs from left to right. The bidirectional RNN will have two blocks wherein one RNN block runs from left to right and another RNN block runs from right to left. So, as usual, so we will have vector of all zeros at this particular time step. Okay. And we will have a 0 here. Okay. So, now listen to me carefully how this bidirectional RNN works. Okay. So, we know that we have inputs at each time step and feeding it to the RNN, simple RNN. And let me call this as a forward RNN. So, I am just writing a forward arrow mark on top of activations. Okay. So, what happens in case of bidirectional RNNs? You know that we have introduced a new block of RNN which will be running from right to left and the inputs will be looking something like this. Okay. So, it will get these inputs and it will produce some outputs. Okay. Okay. So, these time step will be the activations from these blocks will be represented as A but with the backward arrow because I am talking about moving back in direction from right to left. Okay. So, this will be my A4 in backward direction. This will be my A3 in backward direction. This will be my A2 in backward direction and this will be my A1 in backward direction. Okay. So, I will have my another block here and then I will get my A0 in backward direction. So, we can ignore this. We do not want A0. We will stop at A1 in backward direction. Okay. So, now that we have written the connections and also the activations in both forward and backward direction, we need to write the outputs right at each time step. So, in order to calculate the output at each time steps, what we will do? We will com concatenate the activations from both these blocks. So, this will be my y hat 1. So, which considers a t in forward direction and also a p in backward direction because I am getting for y, y hat 1, I am getting a 1. Okay. So, the activation from this is a 1, right? 
So I am getting that and also I am getting another thing which is A2 from the backward running RNN block. So this is my A2 which is A backward T. Okay, And I am concatenating it to compute my output at that particular time step. So similarly for Y2 it will be Y hat 2 it will be A2 in the forward direction and A2 in the backward direction. So likewise we will have our outputs concatenated at each time step. Y hat 3 it will be A3 in the forward direction and A3 in the backward direction. And similarly Y hat 4 we will have A4 in the forward direction and A4 in the backward direction. Now we will understand how this architecture is able to get the context from future time step and then able to predict the output. Okay. Now if you want to calculate the activations at any given time steps, so let us say AT, okay. so this will be tan H, we will have weights associated to compute the activations. So, I am calculating the forward direction activations at time step t. So, I will have my w a in the forward direction and I will have my a t minus 1, right. So, these equations you already know when we were learning simple RNN and cell extension GRUs, correct. So, we will have w x with forward direction and x t at that particular time step, we will have the bias associated with computing activation okay so now in order to compute a t activation at time step t in backward direction what will be the inputs so the weights w a in backward direction this is another set of weights okay instead of a t minus 1 we will get a t plus 1 here right why we are getting a t plus 1 so if you see here in order to compute this a1 in backward direction, we are getting input from a2 in backward direction, correct? Correct. Similarly, in order to compute a2 in backward direction, we are getting input from the a3 in backward direction. So, that is why a t in backward direction will be taking input a t plus 1 in backward direction. Okay. So, next remains the same w x in backward direction x t. So, this remains same. We will take the same input at that particular time step and then we will have our bias associated to compute a t in backward direction. right? So, this is the activations. Now, in order to compute the output at any given time step, I told you we will concatenate these two activations. right? So, y hat at particular time step t will be equal to so, let us say we are having sigmoid activation function in the output layer. So, I will just write sigmoid of I will have some weights associated to compute my y hats and I will have these things concatenated y t in forward direction and a t in backward direction and then we will have our bias associated to compute our y hat. Okay, so that this is it. So the math is not that complex. So you could have thought that the math is complex in case of bidirectional RNN, but it's simple. So there is an additional layer which runs from right to left in case of bidirectional RNN, which will facilitate the computation of outputs at each time step so that we can consider the context from the future as well. So one thing to remember here is this y hat t the predictions will not be computed during forward pass no this will not be computed during forward pass for any sequence we have to do one forward pass and while coming in back direction from right to left we will start computing all these outputs y4 by considering a4 in back uh, by considering A4 in forward direction and A4 in backward direction. Then we will compute y hat 3 by considering A3 in forward direction and A3 in backward direction. So, similarly, we will compute the rest of the outputs, right? 
So, what's the working step for bidirectional RNN? First thing, set up the model, set up the architecture as per your wish, how many layers you want to have, you can have it. But the computation goes like this. So, do a for pass. Sorry. So, do a for. What happened? I think scribble got crashed. Let me get it back online. Okay. So, sorry for that. Uh, something happened and scribble dot got closed abruptly. Okay. So, I was talking about the steps involved in bidirectional RNNs. So, let me just write it. So, the steps are like this. So, the first step is do a forward pass, but do not, but do not compute outputs. So, when I say outputs, the predictions y hats. Okay, do not compute it. So, what you will do in forward pass, you will cache a t forward pass in your memory. In the second step, you do backward pass. Right, while doing back backward pass, you will compute the activations in reverse order. Then, using the cached activations at each time step, Concatenate backward computed activations and activations at computed during forward propagation and apply the desired activation on top of it. Activation on top of it to compute our. Sorry, guys, uh, again it got crashed. Seems there is a problem, but uh, you got a gist of it, right? So let me try to open it again. Okay, so once we do the computation in reverse direction, right, uh, by at every time step t, then we will combine these two things in order to compute the output at that particular time step t. Then when we have this predicted at this particular time step and we do this for all the time steps, we will have our actual values as well, right, so y t. So based on our task, we will define some loss function. And then apply our optimization algorithms. So, optimization algorithms could be anything. It could be simple gradient descent, it could be stochastic gradient descent, it could be Adam optimization, it could be RMS proc, it could be anything, right? So, with this setup, these are the steps in order to run the bidirectional RNNs. So, hope you guys understood. Uh, how a bidirectional RNN works and the math involved in it in order to compute the activations at each time step and also at what time we will compute these outputs. Okay, So, we will compute the outputs also in reverse order. Why? Because it is computed during the second step of the computations wherein we will start to compute the activations in reverse order. Okay. So, that's it about this bidirectional RNNs. If you guys have any questions, reach out to me in comment section. Uh, if you are liking the content, give it a thumbs up and share it among your peers. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. Okay. So, till we see in the next video. Happy learning. Bye-bye.